Hello, I'm Dr. Bob Slevik. I'm the Director of Graduate Studies in Psychology here at Maryland, and uh, I'm very happy to welcome you to this virtual tour of our PhD program in psychology. Our department currently has about 30 active research labs. The faculty and grad students who work in these labs have a, a wide range of interests and typically identify with at least one of our five specialty areas, which are clinical, counseling, cognitive and neural systems, or CNS, developmental, and social decisional or organizational sciences, or SDOS. In a bit, you'll hear from representatives from, from a couple of these areas, which will give you a sense of at least some of the kinds of work that we've been doing here. Uh, but first, I just wanna say a couple of things about our PhD program overall. Uh, mostly, I wanna address a couple of the most common questions that I hear. I hope you'll have other questions uh, and we'll save the bulk of this hour for a Q&A session um, with me and some other people. Uh, and I hope you'll also check out many of the other good sessions put together for this week long virtual visit. The uh, Office of Graduate Diversity and Inclusion has, has made this a really nice resource for prospective applicants. But first, funding. We guarantee five years of funding to any student that we admit. This typically consists of some combination of teaching assistantships or research assistantships. Um, you can think of it as a part-time job, probably working as a TA that doesn't pay all that well, but that does include a tuition waiver. So you don't have to pay tuition at least, although you do still get stuck with some student fees. Our typical student stipends start at around $25,000 a year, although this can vary depending on grant support, recruitment initiatives from the college or university, and various other things. Now, because we guarantee five years of funding, we only admit as many students as we can fund. And that means that not all faculty members will be accepting students each year. And so I encourage you to make sure that you aren't applying to do work with someone who isn't planning on accepting students that year. Uh, many departments, including ours, list faculty uh, and labs who are actively recruiting on their webpage, but you can also reach out and ask directly. I mention this because our program works under a kind of an apprenticeship model. So students are admitted to work with specific faculty in specific labs up front. And that means your likelihood of being admitted is much higher if you target your application to a specific faculty member or members who are actually planning to recruit that year. As a side note, if you're interested in the cognitive and neural systems area of our department, I encourage you to check out the virtual visit system from the NACS program, the Neuroscience and Cognitive Science program tomorrow. Our CNS faculty often recruit primarily through the NACS program, so you can get more specific information uh, on that area there. Our PhD students do lots of impactful and interesting research in their time here at Maryland. Some go on to careers in academic research, some choose teaching-focused careers, others become practicing clinical or counseling psychologists, and yet others go on to do applied research in industry or government jobs. Whatever they do, they do it equipped with the strong theoretical and analytical tools that they get via their PhD here. You can find a lot of information about our program and the admissions process on our website, psych.umd.edu. I hope you'll check that out. Um, I also hope you'll stick around for the rest of this presentation and for our Q&A in a few minutes. In any case, thank you for considering graduate work at Maryland. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Jessica Magidson, and I'm an assistant professor in our clinical program in the psychology department. I direct a lab called the Global Mental Health and Addiction Program. The mission of our lab is to extend access to evidence-based mental health and substance use treatment to underserved settings globally. Ultimately, our goal is to improve the reach of mental health and substance use treatment for historically excluded and marginalized populations. We work in underserved settings in Sub-Saharan Africa, largely in HIV care in South Africa. We look at how we can integrate substance use treatment and mental health treatment into HIV care. We want to see can we improve substance use outcomes, but also can we improve HIV care outcomes. We also work in many low-income communities across the U.S., including in Baltimore, D.C., and Detroit. We work in settings that are reaching predominantly racial and ethnic minority patients with mental health and substance use treatment concerns. In many of these settings, whether it's a global or a local setting, there's a severe shortage of trained providers available to meet the mental health and substance use treatment needs. So a big focus of our work is looking at how we can train peers or people with their own lived experience with mental health or substance use treatment and substance use concerns to deliver interventions with close supervision that are typically delivered by psychiatrists or psychologists and we want to understand how peers can extend access to services and also improve quality of care by incorporating their important lived experiences into care. We're also really interested in understanding how peers, by sharing their own lived experience with patients, with other providers, could potentially reduce stigma around substance use and mental health, which we know is a huge barrier for people receiving care. Our lab is also focused on understanding not only whether interventions work to improve health and mental health outcomes, 
but also how they can be implemented in real world settings and sustained beyond the life of our grant funding. Please check out our website for more information. It's gmhaddictionlab.org. You can find us on Twitter at uh, gmapumd, uh, and we hope to meet many of you soon. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Hong Bui, and I'm a second year PhD student in UMD's clinical psychology program. As a first generation college and now PhD student, I wanted to share about diversity initiatives that I've had the opportunity to participate in, both within and outside my research lab. Within the lab, the UMD ADHD program is comparing two treatments for ADHD families in underrepresented racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups through primary care settings. Recruitment in primary care settings serves to broaden access for underserved people who might not otherwise receive mental health services, in this case when both parents and children may struggle with ADHD. Outside of the lab, I'm funded to work on a project creating a video series on BIPOC mental health. We interview BIPOC researchers, clinicians, and clients with lived experiences in videos that will go on YouTube. Our hope is for these videos to be used in undergraduate and graduate courses to improve the accuracy and representation of BIPOC mental health topics. Hi. My name is Dr. Ariana Gard, and I am here representing the developmental psychology faculty for this information session um, for prospective PhD students. So we are a group of five faculty, and although we're all developmental psychologists, we're actually affiliated with a bunch of different departments and um, other areas in the psychology department. And why this is important is because developmental science is very interdisciplinary. Our students receive training from a really wide variety of disciplines. So for example, some of us are affiliated with cognitive science, clinical psychology, the Department of African American Studies, Population Studies Center, the Social Data Science Center. So we, we believe that this kind of interdisciplinary training really helps our students understand how individuals develop over the lifespan. And so at our core, developmental psychologists think a lot about how individuals develop over time. And in addition to thinking about genetic predispositions and individual level factors like temperament, we also think a lot about how environments shape child outcomes from things that are really proximal in the child system, like peers and parents, to things that are even more distal, like schools and neighborhoods, and even things like laws, attitudes, and cultural orientations. So Dr. Finita Tyrell um, thinks about how different cultural and contextual processes strengthen pathways to typical and atypical development. She thinks about things like neurobiology, health and socio-emotional outcomes in ethnic racial minority youth and, and young adults. Dr. Jude Cassidy examines how family processes and attachment relationships shape socio-emotional development, as well as develops interventions to improve and help children develop regulatory capacities. And she thinks about these questions in infants, children, and adolescents. My lab thinks a lot about how environments shape health and well being through neurobiological mechanisms. So, we look at outcomes like functional organization of the developing brain, cellular aging, and mental health, and in predominantly ethnic racial minority families and adversity exposed individuals across the lifespan. Dr. Redke examines biological, social, and cognitive factors that underlie children's social abilities. And she, in particular, is interested in children and adolescents with and without autism. Her lab thinks about brain development, social competence, information processing, and mental health. And then lastly, Dr. Riggins and her group examines how family processes and stress impact cognition and brain development in infants and young children, with a particular focus on the biological underpinnings of sleep and memory. So we represent five faculty with very diverse research interests, highly interdisciplinary. And if this kind of work excites you, I would encourage you to reach out to one of us and talk about um, possible uh, entrance into the program and the application process. Thank you so much.
Hi, I'm Dr. James Grand and a faculty member in the Social, Decision, and Organizational Sciences program, or SDOS for short, here in the Department of Psychology. On behalf of my SDOS colleagues and our current PhD students, I'd like to offer a brief introduction to our program, our faculty, and the types of work that we do. The SDOS program is a unique and multidisciplinary group that combines expertise, training, and interests that span three distinct areas of psychology, social psychology, industrial and organizational psychology, and judgment and decision making. In many universities that you'll find, these programs are housed in separate and distinct units of the department with little to no overlap amongst the faculty or graduate training. However, the SDOS program integrates these three areas under the same roof. We believe that familiarity and expertise within these naturally intersecting domains greatly improves our students' ability to conduct important and meaningful problem-focused research, as well as effectively secure diverse academic and industry positions. Indeed, many of our former graduates of, pro of our program have been employed in psychology departments, business schools, government agencies and think tanks, consulting firms, and Fortune 500 companies around the world. Although the work pursued by our faculty and students is diverse, the SDOS program is united by our recognition that the emotions, the thoughts, the perceptions, and the re behaviors that we study all occur within the context of dynamic social systems and environments. What that means is that we acknowledge that the context, the cultures, the relationships, the environments, and the situations that people experience every day affect how they feel, how they act, and how they think. Simultaneously, we also acknowledge that the way that those people feel and act and think and react shape those very same environments. So in this sense, the work and training that we emphasize in SDOS uh, through our faculty and student research and work directly acknowledges these reciprocal top-down and bottom-up forces, and we study them across a variety of specific topics and domains. Generally speaking, our faculty and our students tend to affiliate most strongly with at least two of these areas, as reflected by the research they publish, the courses and curriculum that they take and that we offer, and the collaborations that we encourage and facilitate. Our faculty and students that are more aligned with interests in social psychology tend to examine behavior, thoughts, and feelings and emotions as they relate to social and interpersonal situations. Example topics that have been pursued by those in our group include understanding how individuals react and adapt to goals, how the presence of stereotypes and biases affect decisions or attributions, and how groups or relationships might affect the way that people behave and interact. Those SOS faculty and students that are aligned with interest in industrial and organizational psychology, or IO psychology for short, study organizations, employees, and their interactions to better understand how to make the workplace more meaningful, fair, and effective. Example topics pursued by faculty and students in this domain tend have included leadership, how organizational climates or cultures emerge and their impact on employees, ways in which we can improve the diversity, inclusion, and equity of organizations, and the processes underlying effective teamwork. Lastly, our faculty and students that are aligned with interest in the decision sciences tend to examine the ways in which people make judgments and choices. Example topics that have been pursued in this domain include applications of behavioral and economic decision making, uh, negotiation and group decision making, and the manner by which uncertainty, goals, and values affect people's judgments, perceptions, and decisions. To provide some more specific examples of the work being carried out in our program, I've invited one of our wonderful graduate students to share some of the work that they've conducted during their time here as an SDOS student. My name is Jayan Lee, a fifth year doctoral student in the SDOS program who studied topics related to diversity and inclusion in the workplace. To fight against racism, racism should be acknowledged and labeled as racism. But people often hesitate to label the racist incident and person as racist because of the accusatory nature of the label racist. In the project named Counterfactual Thinking and Labeling Racist Incidents, we examine the role of counterfactual thinking on racist perceptions. So there are three types of counterfactual thinking. The target would have been better off if the incident had not happened. The perpetrator could have done something differently. Uh, the perpetrator should have done something differently. We found that when people think that the perpetrator should have acted differently, which is related to perceiving a norm violation, they're more likely to label the perpetrator as racist. So in conclusion, this brief overview only scratches the surface of all the interesting and exciting topics that we're pursuing within SDOS across our faculty and our students. For more information about our program, our current faculty and interests and ongoing projects, 
as well as our current students, please visit our website at sdos.umd.edu. Thanks very much. So everybody, I'm delighted. Uh, my name is John Moore, and I'm a faculty member in the Counseling Psychology Program here at the University of Maryland. And I'm delighted to have just a couple of minutes here to tell you a little bit about our program and specialty area. I want to start off, um, some people don't know the answer to this question. What is counseling psychology? So I want to say a bit about that. Um, our subdiscipline of psychology is concerned with understanding and enhancing the well-being of individuals and communities through research and intervention. Um, as a field, we tend to take a broad view of well-being, looking at multiple dimensions, including mental, physical, vocational, spiritual, and multicultural well-being. Um, also, as a field, we tend to place less emphasis on a medical model approach uh, focused on uh, diagnosing and treating mental disorders. Uh, in contrast, we tend to put more of an emphasis uh, on a strength-based approach focused on um, understanding and helping people cope in their social context. Uh, counseling psychologists do many things, and our own graduates have pursued many paths. Uh, many work as licensed psychotherapists, college professors, applied researchers in government organizations, and even some work as diversity trainers. A little bit about our program. Um, we have 10 faculty, and one thing that's unusual about our program is we're housed jointly in two different departments, the Department of Psychology and the Department of Counseling, Higher Education, and Special Education, uh, which is within the College of Education. Um, even though we are in two different departments, we function as a single unified uh, doctoral program. Our training is pretty deeply rooted in the scientist practitioner model. Uh, we offer rich and intensive training in both research and psychotherapy. And in courses, we uh, emphasize the interplay between research and practice. Our training is informed by a multicultural social justice lens. Uh, we infuse this perspective into many and uh, most of our courses, and you'll see this particularly in our multicultural counseling course and our social justice didactic practicum. Many faculty and students in our program conduct research reflecting social justice concerns. Here are all pictures and names of all 10 of our faculty. Um, the, in the top row are the four faculty affiliated with the Department of Psychology. And in the bottom row are the faculty affiliated um, with uh, the Chessie Department in the College of Education. Um, and a number of research areas are represented in our faculty. Uh, a number of us do research related to social, uh, cultural diversity and social justice concerns. Uh, for example, looking at how uh, manifestations of racism, sexism, and heterosexism uh, influence the well being of people, um, influence mental health treatment. Uh, and even the development of a positive identity. Some of us do research on psychotherapy processes and outcomes, looking at what occurs in sessions between clients and therapists and linking that um, with not only the success of individual sessions, but ultimately the effectiveness of treatment as a whole. Some do research on therapist training and supervision. Uh, for example, looking at new approaches to training novice psychotherapists um, to become effective clinicians. And some do research on vocational functioning and career development. For example, looking at processes leading to burnout in the workplace or career choice. And just to keep things uh, moving along, I'm going to end there. Um, if you have any questions about our program, please uh, feel free to go to our website, which has lots of information. Uh, and also you can contact either of our program co-directors, Gioni Lewis or, or me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Moore.